let's talk about the lathe a little bit, specifically starting with the headstock here. What do we want from the muscle of our machine? Well, of course, it contains the motor, which drives this spindle, and we want to have a threaded spindle that we can mount chucks on or a Morse taper that we can mount chucks in. The most uh, simple lathe has a, a speed control that is just some pulleys where we change a belt. Today, uh, electronics have become very sophisticated and inexpensive, so it's fairly easy to add a variable speed control to a lathe. This is usually in combination with a set of pulleys yet, and you can liken this speed dial to the accelerator in your car and the pulleys to the gearbox. You're gonna use first gear for like faceplate turning and second gear for spindle work. Cool. All right, uh, from the headstock, let's go to the tailstock here and uh, talk a little bit about the function of the tailstock and the quill. Well, of course, it is the other end of the support team. It supports the outboard side of the turning, be it faceplate or spindle, because we support both. And we want this to be heavy and solid with a good diameter on the quill. And a fair amount of travel here is desirable because we can drill a deeper hole without moving it. If we put a drill in the tailstock, uh, we can handy. reach out over things. So lots of travel is great. Yeah. And so the tailstock uh, moves on these two pieces of uh, cast iron here. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the ways. Well, of course, there are two highways that the uh, tailstock and the banjo travel back and forth on. Mm -hmm. And weight is desirable in a lathe. Uh, vibration, which we turners worry about all the time, is directly proportional to the stiffness of the material it's made from. Steel uh, isn't so good because vibration travels along steel well. Cast iron has the quality of sort of soaking up vibration. Also, the more mass in the lathe, uh, the better. So having plenty of cast iron is why we like our grandfather's big old heavy machines. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the banjo you mentioned before and uh, the tool rest. Well, the banjo, is it's important that it move easily and be well balanced, but lock very solid with minimal effort here. And also that this tool rest move up and down and back and forth and lock very solidly with minimal effort. Also, the height of the banjo is important. The manufacturers list the swing of their lathes as twice the center height, 10 inches in this case, but that's over the bed. The true swing of the lathe is the swing over the banjo. So a higher banjo robs from swing. Right. Also, of course, this is what we rest the tool on and manipulate it, always keeping that bevel rubbing when we turn. Ride the bevel. Uh, something I like to think about in tool rests is having different sizes too, so that if you're doing smaller work, you can be sure to get the tool rest up close. I use a six inch a lot for turning boxes and small things like that. All right, let's get started turning. Absolutely. <laughs> 